Hello, I'm Rob Young. Welcome to Business Daily from the BBC. We're examining the computer software we increasingly rely on to make decisions. The development of algorithms, I think it's transformative for my patients and for my own personal practice. But as computer algorithms play a greater role in our lives, they're coming in for criticism. I think a lot of algorithms we should be afraid of. I think of it as a technology that just doesn't have any safety standards yet. So should we embrace or be afraid of algorithms? That's today's Business Daily from the BBC. Computer algorithms are all around us. They're in the video streaming websites that predict what you want to watch, the internet search results that are tailored for you, and the computers that buy and sell shares on the stock market with reactions far quicker than any person. Increasingly, these complex and seemingly clever pieces of software are being used in other ways, in areas of life far more important than internet shopping. And when it's also called machine learning or artificial intelligence, it worries some. I'm in a hospital in London. Patients here are using artificial intelligence on their smartphones to check their health. There's an app that can be used anywhere to work out whether someone's got a heart problem. Ron Grant was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, or AF for short, after years of visits to the doctor. Now an artificially intelligent app, together with a small gadget, can perform a diagnosis within seconds. I'm 70 years of age. At the age of 55, I had a massive heart attack, flatlined, had a bypass. Ever since the bypass, I've been in heart failure. And so did you know that you had AF, this fundamental problem that there is with your heart? No, it wasn't until after I had the bypass and discovered I I was in heart failure, cried my eyes out because I thought, like the normal layman, heart failure means I'm going to pop my boots. And having had the experience already, quite frightening. And it was some years after that we discovered I had AF, a funny heart rhythm, to put it simply which could lead to stroke. And so this wasn't picked up over years and years of you going to the doctors when you were a a fit person. And there is now this new software app which can be downloaded on any phone. It's got a pretty clever algorithm in it which monitors your heart. Would that have made a difference to you had it been around several years ago? Yeah, it probably would have done. You've got it with you here. Well, you've got your your phone with you here. Demonstrate to me how it works. Well, it's quite simple. You just, <clears throat> and you can either put your thumbs on it like that or your fingers on it, and if you'd like to have a go. So I'm pushing my thumbs down onto a metal plate then, and this is sending the signal, what, through Bluetooth technology or something? Bluetooth. Is it to the phone? Yeah, absolutely. And the heart rate is flashing across the screen, and it tells me that I'm normal, yeah. which is a relief. <laughs> <laughs> and it's as simple as that. Absolutely. Ron Grant. Doctors at the hospital say algorithms like the one I've been trying out are making a big difference, and not just to the patients, but to medical care overall. My name is Boon Lim. I'm a consultant cardiologist and electrophysiologist based in London. So what do you think is the benefit of having these kinds of algorithms used patients? I think it's transformative for my patients and for my own personal practice. I found that the use of the Alive Core device very helpful in making a diagnosis and allowing us to come very quickly to a diagnosis that the patient can understand relates directly to the clinical symptom profile. Surely it can't be as good, as accurate, as an incredibly expensive piece of kit in a hospital. On the contrary, the incredibly expensive piece of kit in a hospital, a 24-hour halter, is given out for a 24-hour period. Now, if you have palpitations that are infrequent, occurring, for example, once every two or three weeks, the 24-hour halter is not going to pick up any of your palpitations. This is where a device utilising the mobile technologies, which is by the patient's side all the time, can be utilised to its fullest to pick up the ECG correlation to the symptoms at the time that the symptoms are occurring. And this gives a precise diagnosis. The development of algorithms in allowing automated detection of different kind of rhythm abnormalities, we can have a very patient-centred approach which should be cost-effective for the NHS and for patients as well.
So this is a very big change then in healthcare. Is it over the top to say it's perhaps a revolution? I don't think it's over the top at all. This change in healthcare and the ability to get very quick diagnosis at the patient's fingertips and enabling the patient to be responsible for their own diagnosis is the way things should be changing and I believe will transform healthcare of the future. Dr Boon Lim. All those who write the algorithms say machines may soon be just as good as people. Francis White runs a live core in the UK, the company that makes a heart monitoring app. An average cardiologist will see a number of ECGs over their lifetime. Our machines have been able to look at 10 million in one go. Uh, you wouldn't really ever get to 10 million ECGs experience, I don't think, in, in, in a given lifetime of, of cardiology practice. So that's uh, something that is important. The other thing, of course, is context, because many of our users share with us who they are, their, their age, their weight, their smoking status and other important factors, we can integrate that into the learning curve. So we can look at all 40-year-old males, for example. We haven't yet brought to market any of these insights, but it's a very exciting frontier of learning for us and the machines involved. People make mistakes. Can artificially intelligent bits of software also make mistakes? Is there room for error? Yeah, of course. And we don't guarantee anything to be 100%. And if you look at human error that, of course, is, is very much the same. So we, we, we're not claiming to be better than a, a cardiologist or a specialist in heart rhythm, but we are getting close. People are sceptical, aren't they, about whether these machines are as reliable as, for example, a cardiologist. And people also worry about the security of data because information about the state of your health is incredibly sensitive and there are potential... There is potential for that information to be stolen, perhaps still also, of course, for it to potentially affect your insurance costs. Yeah, of course. There's always fears with any new adventure. And this is a new frontier, really, that we haven't, there's a species, we haven't yet really fully bottomed out the implications. I mean, there's scaremongering of machines taking over or becoming sentient that we need to have permission whether we can turn them off. We've got all sorts of things that create fear in the population all I would say in counter to that is that the responsible attitude with certainly our company and I know many many people in the in the in this industry we're trying to help people with tools that previously weren't there and yes of course somebody's going to try and manipulate them for evil any new technology any new system can be used for good or ill and that's up to the human being to to decide and for lawmakers to get their heads around it and help us stay on the straight path. Francis White. You're listening to Business Daily on the BBC World Service. It's not just healthcare that's being shaken up by algorithms, the law is as well. In parts of the 